just going to get the meeting started and call the meeting to order at 7.06 uh, p.m. This is a meeting, special meeting of the Board of Finance. And uh, Jeff Clark will be designated a voting member for tonight, um, given the absence of uh, Todd and actually Jim at the moment as well. Okay. Uh, first order of business, uh, except the minutes from the May 12th, 22 uh, meeting. I believe that was a special meeting. So expect, except the uh, special meeting minutes of May 12, 2022. I'll move. I'll second that. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, I'm, oh by the way, I'm keeping minutes tonight because uh, Kelly is out. So bear with me while I just make sure I, I've got them recorded. Uh, that was Jeff with the motion to approve the minutes, seconded by Oliver. That's correct. Yep. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I, I'm going to abstain because I left early. Mike. Okay. All <laughs> votes were in favor. I just note like abstention. Okay, motion passed. Okay, uh, next order of business uh, communication correspondence. I did receive a FOIA request from a resident uh, with regard to uh, the five year model, the Excel model that um, I know you all have copies of and keep uh, up to date. Um, with, with uh, different data elements throughout the year, uh, the budgeting process, um, capital projects, et cetera. So uh, the request was for a model, um, but it's not a, a, an actual record of the, um, of the Board of Finance and there's multiple versions out there and um, it would create a fair amount of confusion, I think, in, the, in, the, uh, in, in its release. So. Um, I responded to that. Um, I also looked in the um, statutes, the FOIA statutes for Connecticut, and um, my my instinct was correct. And I, I also replied back with a citation as to the uh, provision in the statute. Uh, I did also discuss this with uh, Vice Chair Oliver Davis, who's in agreement as well. Um, the next um, piece of correspondence I received was um, a state sort of white paper, one pager on the motor vehicle uh, mill rate cap. It just sort of articulated the uh, details of the law and provided an example for towns to uh, estimate what they think the um, subsidy would be in terms of the uh, mill rate differential um, to be made whole. Uh, did anyone else receive any communication correspondence they want to share? Okay, uh, on to agenda item four. We have two, two topics tonight. One is to um, consider and act upon the mill rate more specifically um, as, as I provided the um, uh, further information on the mill rate cap. It does apply to all motor vehicles on the grand list. So there's no distinction between uh, commercial versus non-commercial. So really I would entertain a motion um, to revise that so that we can get the proper tax bills out. Um, um, I, I would entertain a motion to set the motor vehicle mill rate in its entirety at 32.46 and the real estate and personal property mill rate at 34.1 for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. So moved. Uh, Motion from Oliver. Second. Is that Mike? It's Jim. Oh, it's Jim. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Uh, 
any discussion on that? I'll just clarify that we wanted to make sure that um, the motion was was a full motion inclusive of um, clarifying that real estate and property, personal property was 34.1. We had previously referenced non-commercial uh, to be included. That's why I wanted to adjust uh, the entire motion um, to reflect the updated information. Any other questions? Okay, uh, Natalie. Yeah, I I guess I would be a little bit more comfortable if the motion said um, with respect to the motor vehicle cap as required by the state of Connecticut. Um, but don't don't fret on that too much because I'm still going to vote against it. So, um, and and the reason I'm, I will vote against it is not because I I think uh, the calculation is correct and um, I appreciate um, the chair taking the the time to to go over the. The guidance from the state, which really wasn't it wasn't easy um, to work with, but I still um, this is kind of the capstone of the budget process, and I am not comfortable with that. So that will be the reason I vote no, not because of anything specific to the calculation and the discussion this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Natalie. Um, any further discussion uh, relative to adjusting the um, the motion? Um, I, I think there's enough sort of discussion and and documentation on the cap um, at 3246. I mean, it's a it's a good addition. But um, Jeff, did you have a comment? Yeah, two things. One, I guess for the record, can we uh, show that since Jim is on, that I wouldn't be a voting member at this point. Um, I think at the beginning of the meeting, you said I was until he, until he arrived. So I just want to get that. Um, and no, I, uh, so Jeff, I think you're a voting member that oh. we have, uh, we still have Todd absent. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank I was just waiting for that. him to come on. It was a, it was an additional comment. Okay. Um, and uh, it would be my understanding that, um, this motion wouldn't, uh, increase taxes we would uh, any any deficit would be made up off the um, fund balance uh, by this motion we'd be reducing that portion which was commercial motor vehicles the mill rate down from 34 and change to 32.46 and that that amount would be made up from the fund balance uh, that's that's correct except that um, should this um, government um should the state of connecticut differential it should actually be neutral um to the revenue coming in so i gotta i have a question dollar, regarding... dollar coverage on that yeah go ahead mike <clears throat> no <clears throat> i was i was referring to that when we were at the end of the conversation that i had when i was at the last meeting and we were eighty two thousand or somewhere in that neighborhood was that correct that's right well, we're trying to estimate and that uh example that i sent out from the state would help you also estimate that and i think the main point there is it's off the prior year mill rate not the current year mill rate so there's a little bit of nuance to it but um the eighty two thousand was a rough estimate and that that basically proved that if you change the mill rate to the cap um that presumably the offsetting um numbers from the state should they full f follow through dollar for dollar would would offset the difference well, the numbers that CCM provided, and I don't have those in front of me, was that the 82000 where that came from, or was that a calculation that you had made? Wasn't there something that was provided from CCM as to what we would be getting for the offset? Uh, there were, there were uh, a few publications out of CCM that were also cautioned not to be used for budgetary purposes, et cetera. And um, the calculation that I did myself got to very closely um, that that roughly the 80,000 relative to the um, um, non-commercial um, uh, vehicle. So I think we need to run through the calculation example um, as, as we sort of get into the year and do projections. So to Jeff's point, I guess, 
by default, if we understated our or overstated our our state reimbursement, then it would have to come out of cash balance. There's really no other place to take it. Uh, so, that's correct. Yeah. But recall, I mean, under or overstated, um, remember we set the revenue budget essentially um, back at the town meeting. So that was even before the state budget passed. Um, so those numbers are static. And those, those are our budgeted revenue numbers for next year. To your to your point, I mean, the projection is going to vary differently as, as the year goes along and we see um, the calculations actually materialize. Uh, Natalie, did you have another comment? I did. Thank you. I, um, I actually talked with the um, town assessor and um, she helped walk me through that that state uh, piece. And it's it's not going to be revenue neutral. I agree with everything that's been said, and it's going to the, the shortfall will will come out of cash balance or by default. But I think it's worth um, you know doing that calculation. Actually, having the town uh, assessor maybe help us with that calculation so we understand that. And the reason it's not going to be revenue neutral is because the eighty-two thousand is based on last year's mill rate, and more importantly, last year's well the um, assessment that was used last year. So if you recall, um, our average, our, our motor vehicle um, assessments went up 26 point something percent um, this year. So the state is um, is not using this new, new one. So um, there's a couple of different elements and um, it's worth finding out the, you know, the magnitude of that because all of these different things do hit the cash balance and and even though we can't change the revenue budget, it's locked in. Maybe we want to, you know, add a footnote um, on the five-year model that says even though the motor vehicle expect, you know, the budget is this. In reality, all that's going to be um, possible to collect is is the slower amount. Yeah, that's that's a good point. We can follow up with the assessor and, and get some more. Um, detailed formula calculations, but yeah, I mean, it would make sense if, if you're using last year's assessed value and last year's mill rate to determine the difference, you're going to miss the 20, the difference in the mill rate, the 1% or so, um, applied to the 26% increase. Right. And that, that's a, that's a meaningful chunk. But like you said, you know, the, the variance will come out of cash balance. And I know the eighty-two thousand wasn't in the original budget. We didn't have a line of sight back when the uh, revenue projections were set. So, any other comments? Okay. Um, all those in favor? I. So I got everybody um, opposed. Natalie. Yes. Okay. That motion carries um, on to uh, the next order of business, which was consider and act upon uh, capital requests. These were um, the LED projects mentioned at the last meeting um, that the school has brought forth, uh, the Board of Ed has brought forth. Um, additional materials were sent out even from uh, the prior materials of the last meeting, uh, which was full hundred pages of the contract and details of all the equipment and everything that would go into the two projects. I, I'm thinking that this is two separate projects when we get to the motion. One for um, the um, RDC Moore School, since it's a different location and the, the proposal was written up separately, we have separate numbers. And and the Middle High School, uh, which was uh, another project that was, you know, sort of documented as a uh, with a separate set of numbers at a different address. So I'm thinking of these as two motions. Um, we did have uh, the Allgrove uh, LED project back in 2017, very similar circumstances where um, Eversource at the time was offering a four-year interest-free loan. And, and the way this works is we document the, the, the cost of the project uh, for the town and then we um, note the financing, the interest rate is zero, the term is 48 months, kind of gets paid back through the, the um, 
electric bills or invoices from the uh, monthly electricity bills. And what we do um, is describe this as a loan and we um, move the loan amount, the uh, essentially principal, there's no interest. Uh, we move the principal for the current year um, out of the unallocated fund into the debt service fund. So that is part of the motion um, that we'll be looking at tonight. Um, I've got it drafted up. I can pop it up on the screen when we get to it. Um, but it, it'll read this, the total cost of the project minus the subsidy, and it'll reference um, the loan amount over four years. And it will also reference putting in one fourth of that loan amount for the fiscal year 23, this, this upcoming fiscal year, because that's the first amount of uh, the first 12 months that are due, essentially, um, in the next year. So with that, I would invite um, either Missy or, or Ray to kick this off, uh, just as an overview, a quick, quick overview of the project. Um, and then we, we could entertain any questions. I know you guys had um, a fair amount of time to get through the, uh, the material. Okay, um, I'll, I'll start it off, Mark. Um, I'm a little more familiar th with this than Missy, but um, basically um, we had put them together as a bundle, but we're, I'm going to try to break it out here very briefly. Let me, let me put my camera on here. <clears throat> uh, the, um, let's start with the C uh, RD Seymour project first. Um, the total annual projected savings, and these were projected based upon actual uh, mechanical and equipment purchases, by the way. Um, uh, the annual cost savings are about $10,794. Um, and I really don't want to go through all the numbers separately here, but the uh, total loan amount for RDC Seymour is forty-seven one eighty-two at 0% for 48 months. The monthly payments approximately nine eighty-three ten. Um, monthly savings of about eight ninety nine fifty four. dollars uh, uh, We're in the red on the cash flow there of eighty three fifty six dollars because there's, there's li literally not as much uh, that's going to be swapped out there. Um, on the high school program, that's the one with 130 some odd pages uh, of detail. And on the high school, this is where uh, the larger program will be taking place. And the total uh, cost, customer cost, is, which is us, or total loan amount, would be 321075.73 for 48 months, monthly payment of about 6689, uh, monthly savings of 6974. Um, and so our net cash flow uh, for the high school is 285.68. And this is replacing just about every fixture in the high school, except some of the items within the auditorium itself. Okay, they're, they're not covered. So there are a few items within the auditorium that are not covered. And I can- And uh, middle school, right? And middle school, correct, correct. High school and middle school are all on, it's considered one building but it's in, as far as Eversource. Well, Eversource did walk through. Um, we had Earthlight come through first. Uh, Eversource actually walked through when I signed an intent, and that's all I did was sign an intent. That gave Eversource permission to walk through and actually verify the numbers and the work to be done um, that Earthlight uh, suggested to be done. So there's been two different outside set of eyes looking at, um, at what's to be done. Um, there's really, that's everything in a nutshell. The savings comes in between, uh, with the re us not, uh, with us not adding more mechanicals. Uh, in other words, for example, the other day I uh, I didn't sign a PO uh, for Ray, and Ray's holding off. Ray Carlson, our facilities, he had like five or ten thousand dollars more uh, of fixtures that he we're looking to replace at um, RDC more again. Uh, so we're we're holding off on that to see where we stand with this before we move for, for forward with it. Um, and basically, these numbers were real numbers that were given to Earthlight and Eversource for over the last um, I'm going to say two years that Ray has um, maintained documentation on. Um, 
into a, a, a real work that actually has been done within the system. So uh, it's in the bottom, the bottom line after four years, projected savings is about 100,000 um, a year to, to the district, to the town actually. I mean, it all comes out of everybody's pocket, so. Yeah, and that comes through, as you were pointing out, both uh, reduced power use, electricity wattage um, through the electric bill, but also um, reduced maintenance and replacement costs. I mean, Correct. your fluorescent bulbs are less, I guess, less hours than uh, yeah, they're, they're constantly changing. We're buying them by the case now, uh, fluorescent bulbs. I mean, and these, um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a 20 to 25 year warranty, depending on uh, the type of fixture and bulb that's put in. So, uh, yeah, I think there's a five year warranty on both labor and material yes, um, correct. through uh, through Earthlight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, John Smith from Earthlight is on. If somebody has any wants to really get into the weeds with it. Um, he, I, John has uh, been kind enough to uh, hop on as well. He's on the meeting this evening. Well, why don't I open up? I, I only had one other, one other question. I know I had um, sent you several questions. Which I appreciate. <laughs> Long um, list. <laughs> I, I, mean, I appreciate the response. I, I did, I did share that, um, that, that back and forth with the, uh, the board members. So I think they have um, purview into the, you know, the, the, the questions I had and the responses you provided. Um, so appreciate that. Um, but, but anybody else have any questions or uh, inquiries? I saw Natalie. Yeah, I, I have a few, but just as a starting point, could, could Ray, could you explain who Earthlight is and whether the district retained Earthlight or whether they're an effort I actually, Earthlight... And how they're getting paid. Okay, Earthlight um, gets paid out of the program itself. They're, they're an approved vendor. Um, we've paid them nothing at this point. And they they get paid when the project is done through the whole program. Okay, they are a state approved vendor. Um, they've done uh, they come highly recommended from Ellington and Vernon, several districts I'm very familiar with. Um, I know they've done work with several other districts. They're a Connecticut company. They're they're uh, they're based locally here. Uh, so a matter of fact, I think they're out of Ellington uh, themselves. But uh, they've been around, well, I think about 20, 25 years themselves. Um, and they were in construction and then moved uh, into the uh, solar program along with, as well as programs such as this, LED programs. But um, yes, they've been, they're, they come highly recommended. And you said they get paid at the end of the project. So they get, they get paid through the program itself. That's, that's part of the entire program. Well, what I don't understand, that means they get paid by Eversource because we're not sending them money. It's got to be either Eversource or us, right? Correct. Ever, ever, they get paid through the Eversource project. That's part of the finance program. Okay. And then if the savings, and Mark, I appreciate your comment, are they're both in terms of material costs, which would be one line item in your budget, and it's also your electricity, your usage line, and yet we're putting one year's worth of the cost into debt service. Is Mark, is that just sort of like an accounting thing, but we won't really spend the money out of there, out of the debts, you know, out of the, the loan line? Yeah, that's kind of wish I, why I wish Kelly was here. I think, um, there's got to be some uh, transfer back and forth between how the um, the school is paying their electric bills and how it's coming out of the debt service account. I, it, Ray, I don't know if you, well, I don't see 90, uh, we did it 2017, so the last payment coming out of that would have been in 21. Yeah, that was uh, this past November or December, we paid off the uh, the last loan. 
Mark, this is Mike. If I remember correctly, because we had this conversation when we did the last one, the, they, the town has to encumber that money because we're guaranteeing it. And I think that, I don't know if that's what you're referring to, but we had to create a line item to encumber it. Yeah, no, that's what we're doing, Mike. Like. I think Natalie was a, Natalie had a tactical question. Is, is Does the town write the check for that portion of the electric bill that, that's, you know, the loan repayment? Or does the uh, Board of Ed pay it through the electric bill invoice? I just the don't town know. actually cuts. I, I, I know what we did last time. The town actually, we would get the invoice. We'd send it to the town. The okay. town would, would pay the invoice. That uh, makes a lot of we, sense. And we would pay the electric bill out of our side. Okay. There you go. Okay. And I guess then I um, well, never mind. I'll, I'll hold. I might have one more question. Hey, Ray, can I chime in real quick? It's John Smith. Hi, John. Go ahead. Hi, how are you? So um, you can also, and half the towns we work with keep the loan or the repayment on the electric bill, and the other half actually receive a separate invoice. So you don't have to have it on the electric bill. It can be treated the same way, but invoiced separately. So if you have two different locations where you want to see this go, it's easy enough to set it up that way as well. Yeah, so maybe Ray, you take that away with Kelly and figure out what the most most efficient way is. Okay. We'll have John involved with it when we, when we do it, so that we're that way we're all on the same page too. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jim, did I see your hand up as well, or was it Jeff? Uh, that, was, that was me, Mark. Go ahead. Um, a, a couple simple questions. The, for instance, the uh, high school um, high school. The approved incentive is—is is that a uh, um, a kickback from EverSource for a reduction in the uh, the capital costs? I wouldn't call it a kickback. That's the incentive to reduce the overall cost. And that's coming from EverSource, the state. That's from EverSource, right? Gotcha. This is okay. this is the LED program that they're offering. Now, I, I'm not I'm not trying to push anything one way or another. The LED program, if I'm not mistaken, John, correct me, um, I believe it ends at the end of this fiscal year. So we've got a short, we're one of the last districts in the entire state to take advantage of it. So that that's that's one of the reasons why I get a little nervous trying to push this thing and, and get everybody on board with it. So because you're not going to have another opportunity. And, and Ray, to really, um... I wouldn't say it's ending fiscal year. Um, things are going down. As LEDs mm -hmm. have become more popular, you can see it even at Home Depot where you buy your light bulbs. Is they're no longer being incentivized in most cases. So more and more incentives are going away and more restrictions are being put on the program and it's pushing in towards controls and all kinds of other things that you might save energy with, you know, as you guys are able to get gas into the building, for instance, over at the high school, there'll be incentives for that down the road to help you out as you, you know, get that gas into the building, whatever it might be. But on the electric side and on the lighting side, certainly those pro these programs are going away. It's just no two ways about it. A couple of years ago, we would have had double the incentive, you know, on this particular project. But still, where you're at now, you know, especially the high school, the technology is such a mishmash of older technology that it really is going to stabilize what you have going on there and make it so much easier to maintain over the next 20 years, wherever it might be. You know, and, and to emphasize again what our warranty is, that five-year labor and material warranty means that your crew doesn't touch a light for the next five years. And we are out of Ellington and we aren't going anywhere. And that's a promise from us, basically. It's a quick response warranty coverage that you likely will never need to use, but when you do, it's there. And your guys aren't putting any hands on these lights or raising any lifts to take care of them. Uh, Jim, did we re answer your, I apologize, maybe we went a little stray. But oh, I, I got the answer. Uh, but oh. I have a second question is, I understand the five-year labor and material warranty, but on further, further on, on that, uh, uh, 
on the proposals is a two-year warranty. Is, is that a two-year warranty from the uh, from Greenlight? It's, it, it differs from the five-year uh, labor and material warranty. I think that's one of the documents we sent over revised um, while we were having these discussions, right, Mark? That was one of the yeah, questions. Yeah, that, I, I noticed the two-year was inconsistent with the five-year in the other documents. So um, you look at that summary um, contract form that said used to say two. It, it reads as five now. Okay, thanks. If you need anything to see anything, I can pull it right on the screen at any point. I've got both projects in front of me. So if you want to see any details about anything, feel free to ask and I'll pop it up on the screen. Thank you, John. Uh, Jeff? Uh, uh, a couple questions. Um, do you have any experience? I, I guess this would probably be for John. But um, it, around what the annual maintenance costs happen to be in years five plus for some of the early adopters, are they, do those, the savings obviously because of the warranty, but when the warranty has gone, are the materials higher, about the same, lower than, than they have been before? Well, it's, it's obviously a, a tricky question to answer, right? Like any new technology as it goes but led is no longer new i guess you could say so probably for the last 10 years we've been doing this and we haven't come across any monumental issues that would say holy cow boy prices have really changed and even you know even now with all of the issues getting material where price has gone up about 20 percent thereabouts over the last year we haven't seen monumental changes to the technology prices. I think if anything, certain easy technologies are going down in price as opposed to up. So I can't say over that time frame that I would be fearful. I think technology is getting stronger, not weaker, which is going to bring something like an LED lamp down in cost as opposed to send it through the roof. Okay, thanks. Um, I guess I have two more questions. Is there anything that I, I mean, I see that the kilowatt hour cost, and um, I'm not sure how the gas is calculated, but is there anything around the price of electricity or gas that if it fluctuates too far in one direction, the savings change, which I would imagine would be a crash in prices, which wouldn't be such a bad idea, but yeah. is, there uh, anything that, is there anything that puts that at risk, I guess? The only thing we're seeing is um, prices go up, right? Right, so now, right now, yeah. Nothing puts your projects at risk. Okay. So your project is what it is. That payment that you have is a fixed number. Your energy savings are based on the hours of operation and the existing to the new technology. So that part of it on the lighting side is kind of simple math as it goes. The one big variable in our lives is how much electricity is going to change and it's certainly not as volatile as gasoline is mm -hmm. you know it's a little bit more stable than that so and we've even seen it over the last five years it goes up three cents it goes down three cents you know it's not a huge variation i guess i would at, at some point i don't know if we want to go through the other questions but if, if we could just walk through a hypothetical hypothetical example of let's use simple money like a hundred thousand dollar cost and a ten thousand in savings and just kind of walk through where the board of finance puts money what happens to the electric bill how do how does the town get their money back I, I, so let's go through other questions but if we could just walk through one so we kind of know what the whole thing would look like yeah jeff i guess before we get into yeah. um or before i have Ray or John jump into that, which will probably be a walkthrough of the sure. business case numbers that you have on there. But I had a similar question in the fact that I think you need to see the reduction in the school budget uh, for the maintenance cost savings and the lower electricity costs. And that's how you realize the savings because, you know, we're going to take this and put it in debt service. So that's net net out to the town. So you need the offset. So right. Yeah, where's that? You know, I think from? that that's a that's a conversation now that the twenty two uh, the twenty three budget is already set. Um, that, that's where I was actually going to go at the end of this, which was, I think we need to see a return of X dollars 
in excess of the debt service um, coming out of the fiscal 23 spend at the Board of Ed. It would make sense in terms of, now there might be some timing issues relative to, you know, maintenance, depending on where the project starts and ends. But um, in general, personally, I'll be looking for a line item budget reduction uh, from the Board of Ed, because that's, that's where the savings, the loans get paid out of a separate account. Is that where you were headed? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Was, um, was, Ray, uh, I don't know how you're thinking about that. Was I don't believe that was done in years past, though. I don't. I didn't see it on, on any budgets that I saw. It was never a, a reduction. A line item reduction was not done. I I, I can go back again and take a look, but I well, don't. Well, maybe. So I'm not saying a line item reduction. That's risky. Per, per se for you know this evening or this action or or you know an amendment i think you know the town already approved the budget this is a cost saving measure that's going to lower the school's outlay of electricity costs when they're in and it's going to lower the school's outlay of um maintenance costs maintenance and equipment replacement right yeah, once it's complete once it's complete and up and running, right. yeah, that's what I meant. But from a timing right. perspective, I don't think in right. in this upcoming fiscal year you'll see the dollar for dollar offsets. Now, now keep in mind, and I'm not some of these some of the maintenance costs we may pay for the for the material, but the town is actually chipping in with uh, in kind services. So, I'm getting numbers from the town for some of this only because it's an in kind service that we apply to my e my EFS at the end of the fiscal year. So that 350,000 or so of in-kind services that we incur each year, part of that is wrapped within. Them. So I'm dumped, I'm grasping with how do I, how do I show a line, line item reduction? That that's, so I'll have to get the, I, for me to do that, I'd have to get together with Kelly and actually see. Well, you'd, you'd have lower electricity costs. So that's an Correct. easy one, right? This was my estimated kilowatts and this is I'm paying less. Correct. Um, and those savings I we can roll. I wasn't back aware the that there was sort of a. Um, yeah, when when I had asked about you know how firm the the um, maintenance uh, savings were, maintenance and repairs, etc. Um, I, I guess the reply was, well, it's a very detailed, supportable calculation. I didn't understand that it was sort of in-kind services and, and it's salaries of people that we already have on the staff that you're not necessarily going to carve out. So Some are. Then some we do have the electrician that we utilize to, uh, to install them also. So there, there's, there's I'd have to do a complete analysis and break out of that. But there should be a substantial savings. Oh, yeah. I, Hard I, dollar. I, yeah, there would be. When you, I wouldn't be using the electrician anymore, um, and well, for, for that type of work, for example. Hi, uh, John. Were you trying to say something? Well, I can recall, and I can find the email as well. And Ray, you might have the email when you sent this over. I asked directly if labor was included in those numbers, and I believe the response was no. So, any of your in-kind costs. I don't think we're related to the actual maintenance numbers that we put in this particular. Oh, Ray gave you strictly material costs. Awesome. That's what I believe was in okay. that. Email. And I can dig for it here while you guys are talking, if you'd like, and see if it does. Yeah, I mean, to do the true proper hard, uh, true proper economic analysis, you'd want the hard cost, right? right? You, I mean, you know, soft cost, cost avoidance, other labor, you know, it's. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll be have to come up. Now. Right. We'll, we'll have to come up with that for you. The line item reduction, if that's what you're looking for. Basically, okay. we could do some sort of a reduction once everything is complete within the elect electrical line. The line item for electricity. That's an easy calculation. That should show up immediately or at least at the end of the fiscal year. 
Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I, the way I'm thinking about it, and I think this is where Jeff was headed, we're talking about, um, you know, $80,000 a year for the next four years for the high school mm-hmm. in payment. Jeff and I and probably other members are looking for that 80000 to come out of the Board of Ed spend. And why wouldn't it? Otherwise, why would we do it kind of thing? You know what I mean? Right. 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 Yeah, I guess the way I'm looking at it is future years, we would reduce the budget, right? We can't reduce the current year budget. Right. And then, I mean, the 23 budget, but 24, 25, 26 would probably have a lower amount. Um, it does. And then 23, right, it all depends on when everything goes online. How long do these projects take, roughly? I mean, from approval to... Getting the problem we have once we get a, once we get the material ordered six to eight weeks once we get full approval, and I I've, I've I've put the brakes on doing anything until we get full approval, um, and then but once the material comes in, what do you think, John? Four to six weeks for complete install. Yeah, I would say the high school middle school is going to be six to eight weeks probably. Six to eight. Yep. All right. Now, the problem we have is we don't have a second shift staff at the schools to allow them to come in, set up, and, and, and really go crazy after September. So we're, we're pushing the envelope right now. For the so, group. I mean, just uh, thumbnail, you're about four to five months into the school year. So half the savings... So we should be thinking of fiscal 23 as about half a year savings, three years of savings, the next fiscal years, and then another half that, that fifth year process, something along those lines. Yeah, I would say that's, so. That's where my head is. Okay. We have that email in front of me as well. And I asked the question when the maintenance numbers were sent over, I asked if the lighting material, if these were lighting material and labor numbers. And the response was just lighting numbers that do not include labor. Okay. So those, yeah. so those are fixture numbers only. Okay, that's good. Did John, did he provide any detail? Like, I don't know, it's 50 bulbs and, you know, three... Yeah. Lump numbers. Yeah, Seymour was thirty six seventy seven last fiscal year, and uh, high school middle school was twenty two seven twenty seven thereabouts. Okay. Well, I mean, Ray was referencing a ten thousand dollar PO that's pending, you know, and that's not labor, right? right. No. Yeah. Right. It's long. Okay. Um, Jeff, I sort of jumped in on that whole thing. Did you, uh, do you have other, other questions or comments? No, I just want to, when everybody's done, just do want to walk through a hypothetical example. Okay. Uh, other, Natalie? Yeah. Um, John, I'm wondering if you can help me out. I, uh, I, I did see the extra 100 pages, but I didn't have an opportunity to look look through them. But I'm um, I'm curious, Eversource and, and you folks do this all the time, and apparently with most districts and through the state already. And um, I'm just wondering about the, the legal approval mechanism and whether um, there's something that I missed that, that set forth what the um, – what the towns are required to do, um, or sample motions, that kind of thing. But was that in there and I just missed it? Um, I don't think I have, I don't put the town's rules into our proposals as it goes. I, I can tell you that we're also under state contract. So you've got two things working in your favor here. One of them is the Eversource control of the process, which all of these projects have been put to bid, all of the pricing that's used in these projects have been put to bid. 
the state uses the same process for their state buildings. And it's exactly what you're seeing here is exactly what they're doing. And they're using the exact same repayment plan. And it allows them to work through this process without having to take these things to bid and pay all that expense and go through all that hassle of having so many different um, pieces of pie come to the party as it goes. But it also prevents them from having to fill out credit paperwork to do this repayment process. This is an on-bill electric. If you pay your bill on time, you qualify for this 0% repayment plan through Eversource. So it's really helped states and municipalities work through the process and get things done quickly, as opposed to these arduous processes that go on. So I don't know if that helps you at all. Um, as far as what towns do, it's up to individual towns how they're going to handle it. I can tell you that the majority um, go to their Board of Ed, have their meetings, um, decide typically at the Board of Ed meetings, sometimes with the help of the Board of Finance, sometimes not. Every single town is slightly different in how they do these projects. Yeah, thank you. And I just, I wasn't on the Board of Finance in 2017, so I just don't know what the process was at that time, um, but I'm directing this comment to my, my colleagues on the Board of Finance, um, I, it just makes me a little uncomfortable that we're talking about entering into a, um, a loan agreement without legal counsel. So I was just wondering, John, we operate under the general statutes of the state of Connecticut, which a decent number of towns do. So um, that's why I was wondering whether, and, and they tend to be the smaller towns, uh, le less sophisticated towns. So that's why I was wondering whether maybe um, our source had put together a model for, uh, for those towns so that they wouldn't have to incur legal expenses. Well, that's where the state contract comes into play. If you take a look at, and I referenced the number um, at the back of this, um, a summary Actually, John, uh, John uh, I think Natalie's more referring to our procedural um, motion and wording as to how we would, uh, you know, characterize a financing arrangement versus just a straight out purchase of a project and things like that. So yeah. I, I can add that um, I was on the board at the time um, and I remember um, a long discussion about this and trying to figure out Jim Hayden was uh, helpful and we did engage the town attorney um to help us understand what the proper handling and motion etc in terms of the zero percent interest loan and that's that's um i have a i have a draft motion um from that time period uh, modeled just just after the 2017 motions uh to to account for the um the projects tonight uh, the last one we did was at uh, all grove a very similar arrangement Eversource, I don't remember who the contract was that um, actually put in the fixtures, if it was Eversource itself, if they do that work. Yeah. But, but yeah, we did um, consult the town attorney and have um, the actual motion drafted for us um, so that we could read in. It's, you, you'll see it's, it's pretty legalese. Um, you know, it might, might be just a good good time to share that right now and just put up on the screen as to what the motion would look like. Let me see if I can pop that up. Um, Eden, do you know how to enable sharing for me? Um, I do not. I can share a screen, but I don't, I think that's just for me. Let me see. One participant can share at a time. I don't want to see that. I apologize. I don't. Okay. Well, I'll just read it. I mean, okay. the um, it's four paragraphs. It's whereas the East Granby Board of Education, the town of East Granby, is interested in replacing uh, present lighting at the, this is RDC Moore Elementary School with energy efficient LED lighting, quote the project. And whereas the Board of Education on behalf of the town is about to enter into an agreement with Eversource Energy and Earthlight um, Innovative Solar Solutions, 
for the replacement of such lighting, which said agreement provides for financial incentives to the Board of Education and the town. And whereas the total cost of the project, and this is in the case of um, our motion tonight relative to Marty Seymour, uh, the total cost of the project is a sum not to exceed $59,849, and Eversource Energy has agreed to provide incentives not to exceed $12,660, and has agreed to finance the balance not to exceed $47,189 over four years with 0% interest, uh, referred to as the loan. Uh, the final paragraph reads, whereas the loan is described herein, and a transfer of sum not to exceed $11,797.25. That is one fourth of the four years that we're gonna be paying. Um, that that amount uh, from the unallocated fund balance um, transfers to the debt service account for the fiscal year 2023. So basically you're saying, you know, we're taking one fourth of that and making setting it aside for payment in, in fiscal year 23 when it's due and that the LED project will require approval of the Board of Finance and of the town meeting. So that's how the, uh, the long motion reads. And I'll read it again when we're prepared to, um, to go through it. And, and as Jeff requested, maybe we just do you know, a walk through of the numbers so people have the familiarity. It's the Mark, growth cost, the net listen. cost. Okay, go yeah. ahead. I just well, I had a few questions before, I, if you were going to wrap up the question. Yeah, I'm, I'm wrapping up. Yeah, so the gross cost, net okay. cost, the loan amount um, for the principal that's due uh, out of the debt service fund for the next fiscal year. So, again, I'll, I'll, I'll read the motions when we get to it. But, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, uh, kind of to, to layer over some of the questions that were asked, a couple things were, uh, Ray, you are correct. There was no, I don't think, well, I know we didn't ever circle back to calculate any potential savings in the budgets in the previous LED projects. I don't think we ever went back to the town. I mean, I'm not questioning that it's a good idea, but in the past, I don't think we we recouped any benefit um, from the operating budget for the, the previous uh, LED project, either at the school or the town. We did the town one first, actually. That was early on. Uh, I don't recall uh, any calculations, but it kind of brings up another question that I said. What is the, has there ever been an attempt made, and maybe this is a question for John to go back on these projects and compare the calculations versus real, actual realized savings? Because I always get a little nervous when these numbers are presented. It's kind of like, are we ever going to go back and actually check that? Has anybody ever done a study to like look back at what the calculations are versus the actual savings over a period of time since they've been doing it for a while? Absolutely, I do it all the time. And it's very rare that we come up with anomalies, but uh, yeah. I appreciate when people ask for it, you know, because I hate sending things off into the dark and never know what happened. And yeah, we can pull a data right off of Eversource's website at any point. And you can ask- The only reason I was asking is if we're gonna to try to incorporate that into savings going forward were there fluctuations and, and they kind of answered that question that you haven't seen a big fluctuation in the electrical charges but i was just curious whenever i see a, 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 a kind of a proposal or a forecast made you kind of wonder are we going to remember to look back at this in three or four years but to jeff's you know kind of request uh to kind of try to calculate that this year kind of answers that but so thank you sure, yeah. and it's something we can do you know, you kind of give it six to nine months the first go round, and then every six to nine months you run it again, and you know, just keep track of where things are. It helps you find anomalies, you know, things that are going wrong, as opposed to things that are going right. You know, at times as well. So it's a great thing to do. And I just had one last question: Is there so we ever uh, what do you ever light or is that what you're called? <laughs> well, <laughs> technologies we ever, are ever bright. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so is that? a single source vendor that we went with because they're on the, the town the state list or did we get multiple uh quotes for this particular project i i made several calls about uh companies that do led lighting now there i know there's uh several out there traditions energy is one um but this company came highly recommended from uh, some of my peers that are within the industry, Mike. And uh, I called them, they came out, they gave us a proposal. 
Um, I believe they even did some work for Ray Carlson on the town side on the solar program that the town had on some of the panels that um, Ray utilized them for as well. But yes, they are. Uh, one of the first things we did check, are they, are, are they state approved? They are on the state approval list. And um, that's one of the other reasons why we went with them. So you didn't receive any other calls? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, it's on mute. Okay, any other uh, questions, comments? I, somebody wanted to, uh, so before we follow up on Jeff's uh, walkthrough, Natalie, do you have a comment? Yeah, and, and it's really with respect to, um, I'm just wondering something to think about. Do we want to do this, if assuming um, we go forward with the motion out of, um, on does the fund balance or on does the capital fund balance? Natalie, you broke up in the last sort of uh, just sentence of your comment. Just something to think about. Um, Sorry, I was just wondering whether in the motion we want to consider doing this out of the capital fund on designated fund balance as opposed to the general fund. Yeah, again, I wish I had Kelly for um, to confirm the particulars. I mean, that's, that's a good thought in terms of, um, you know, the funding source. Um, we do treat it like a project. It's just it's just a fully financed project. Um, we'd access. We, we we could certainly adjust the motion to have the debt service for the next fiscal year, which is how the motion reads. Um, come out of the capital uh, non-recurring fund to the debt service account. Um, I think the the concept is, yeah, I I I could entertain that. It, Natalie, it would at least um, start to make a, a more direct connection with. Uh, funds, you know, coming out of uh, assigned uh, to the Board of Ed, if you will, not that the capital um, five year, uh, not that the multi year um, capital plan is baked. It's, it's, we just approved the capital 600,000 for the whole town um, in the recent budget, but I, I see where you're going with that. Other thoughts? I, um, I had been thinking it would be out of the capital. Um, and actually during the course of the meeting had thought, originally thought it would be the full 368 or whatever. And then that scared me, but realized we could, um, do 25% each of four years, which would be much, much more manageable, I think. Yeah, I think the, the original concept of it being an operating cost, offsetting an operating cost coming out mm -hmm. of the unallocated fund, um, I think was the original thinking. But, um, I mean, it's certainly a, um, a good addition, suggestion. Yeah, I... Um... I just thought of a down. I mean, the downside would be we would have to prove the whole amount up front. We couldn't have, um, like, yeah, you'd have to go. Allow, yeah, we couldn't allow the town or the next board of finance to, you can't get like 25% of the way into the project, then you, it all falls apart. So you got to 
just buy off the whole thing, even if you allocate it out annually. Yeah, that that that's it. That's it, Jeff. Yeah, you'd have to. Yeah, you're not guaranteeing payment on it. Right. Yeah. Let's just allocate the whole thing. Well, actually, as the motion reads, we're only dealing with the first year, aren't we? Well, I think I think what Jeff's saying is you wouldn't want a, a motion. You wouldn't want the first year of payments to just come out of the capital non-recurring fund. You'd have to have the whole project uh, come out of the capital non-recurring fund with money moving over year after year to fund the debt service. Right. Let, let's say it's $40,000 project net. Um, you'd have to get approval from the town to access 40,000 of capital non recurring funds, even though it's going to be 10 a year. And then the board of finance would have to take action every year to move the 10 to debt service out of the capital non recurring fund. But I, I don't, I think Jeff raises a point, which is, do you need to go to the town each year or is the 40 set aside and you can move, um, you know, as intended. The fact that it's, it's a loan, uh, and it's debt service is why I think it, it's set up to come out of the unallocated fund balance. Right. I, I understand that, but isn't this, isn't it the same issue? The same what? And then we simply put the amount in the budget next. We put year two in the in the budget next year, so that's why we don't have to re up do the same thing next year. If if we do the motion as written. Yeah, I lost. I did. Uh, all of your comments didn't come through. Um, I'm hearing. You put the amount in the budget for next year. Are you talking about the fiscal year 23 where we're putting the one year aside? Yes. So if we did it out of. Yeah. So if we do it as you propose doing it out of a general fund balance, we need to do this one time, one quarter appropriation through the town meeting, but for the next three years, we would simply include the $100,000 in the debt service budget at the budget time, right? And yeah, that's correct. But that, that, can't. that we can't do that. We would I have can't hear a word she said. Go now for the full amount if we were to use the capital or go to. Yeah, Natalie, I wonder if, I wonder if you can dial in and use the audio through your phone um, like, like Mike's doing. Um, could you, you're, get, you're coming through really choppy. So just my two cents, it sounds like we might be from, you know, I, I like Jeff's wanting to walk through the process. And from what from my understanding is that the money's coming from the general fund unallocated balance, right? And it's being, you're just, you're accounting for under debt service, which is a yearly thing that we vote for. So I don't think, you know, I kind of get both sides of it. I mean, you're voting for a quarter of it based on the motion or you're, no, and you're, you're just you're just um you're voting for all of it um because you you got the gross project cost you're disclosing the incentive right. and you're saying this is the net cost of the town the net cost um for the project is three hundred twenty one thousand. we're just saying that's over four years uh from a okay. cash flow perspective so we're approving the 320 it's just <laughs> the last part of the motion um, has to mechanically set aside the money into the loan uh, fund so that the debt service can start. It's it's almost a separate procedural thing. Yeah, it's just where you put it on your line item. I don't think that's going to affect anything that we're doing legally at this point. I mean, and I, and I'm comfortable. You're you're using the wording we used two four years ago, five years ago. 
Yeah, correct. Um, okay, I think and that was Jeff's pretty well embedded. Is, but I think Jeff's point is this is this is incremental money out the door for the town, mm-hmm. right? And so we need the offset coming down from the operating budgets, uh, where the um, lower uh, maintenance uh, repair uh, supplies, et cetera, and the uh, lower electric- electricity costs are going to be realized. That's the only but way. That's something we we've already voted on this year's budget. Yeah, that's no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, a, it's a it's a next year's budget item, and if yeah. you know, my 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 strong advice is that it also looks like um, a substantial return coming out of this year when when the savings start to accrue um, in this in this upcoming fiscal year. There should be some sort of offset in the twenty three. Uh, some savings to the 23 budget should we do this project. So the, the electricity cost should come down as soon as these things go in, right? But that doesn't change our emotions. No, no, not at all. It's just a, it's just a sh- strong reminder to the, to the Board of Ed that um, as we see the electra bill coming down, we don't expect that to be, we expect that to be uh, part of the potential return of funds at the end of the year next year. It's the only way to keep it, capture the savings and offset the cost, right? The loan cost. But you're right, Mike. There's, there's nothing, you know, we can't like amend the budget right now. Um, other comments before we get into the, the walkthrough? Okay. Ray, I don't know um, how you want to orchestrate this with John, but. Um, you know, kind of a summary of the, the project cost, the savings, how the savings are derived, um, how that flows through. Uh, Jeff, um, if I'm paraphrasing wrong, why don't you describe what you're interested in seeing? So I actually was more interested in something, and we've, we've hit it a little, but how what dollar amounts would show up where in our budget. And I think we, this last discussion just covered that, like what would go to debt service, what would we move where, and then what would come back from the uh, board of ed operating. So I, I was less interested in calculations and stuff in the presented material than I was in just, and I suggested simple numbers because we can all deal with simple numbers. So basically, if we save a dollar, you want to see that dollar reduction in my budget. Lack of better. Yeah, well, I think what, so where we've come in the last several minutes is, if you think of, again, I'll just round it to 400,000, we would be doing some kind of motion that sets that 400,000 aside, we'd be moving 100,000 a year into uh, debt service. Um, and then we would expect, it, you know, in three in the three solid full calendar years, we would budget the board of ed roughly, you know, let's say eight thousand less a month, because that's you know it's this number in the savings. And then uh, the last year we would do that only for six months, and then the first year we're just we're gonna we're gonna. Um, take you know we gave that suggestion and we would ex, you know we're kind of expecting something that we don't have to find so i think that's more what i was asking is where is the money going to be and i think that was answered in part by the motion and in part by some of the uh follow-up questions So um, I'm hearing you're mostly resolved then, or resolved on your your question. I, yes, I yes, I'm resolved okay. on it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, any other thoughts, comments? Um, Natalie, did, can you clarify um, your point uh, that the motion would? Uh, your your point in the chat that there's no action uh, on the motion. I, the motion would would actually start with I recommend to uh, 
for a town meeting action the following. Um, but I guess if there's additional wording that you think, I, I, I kind of see your point where it just ends with, you know, it requires the approval um, of the board of finance and town meeting. Um, I'm just looking for any, any uh, suggested edits if you don't think it's, it's an actionable motion. Again, it's what we what we used last time in the motion would start off. I recommend for town meeting action the following, whereas, 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 and but happy to take your counsel on that. Yeah. Um. Just can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. Normally, a motion will end. The last paragraph would be now therefore, and it would state what the actions are that are being taken by the the body so it would say now therefore the board of you know and i don't have it in front of me um but the board of finance hereby approves the whatever it is the loan agreement and the transfer of the money of x dollars from wherever to wherever subject to the act you know town meeting action Um, yeah, help me with the, uh, the wording here again. So we have the, whereas, let me see if I can put this up. Well, again, I'm not clear exactly what it is, what parts the board has to do other than I understand um, you know we we need to take the action recommending uh, you know I see eleven thousand seven hundred ninety seven twenty five cents uh, be transferred from the unallocated fund balance to the debt service um, and but I, I think you said we also need to approve a loan agreement that the uh, Board of Ed is entering into with Eversource or Earthlight, whoever it is? No, I think the um, the loan, I mean, the agreement will be entered into by the uh, the, the Board of Ed and, and their authorized personnel. What we're asking the town for recommendation of to approve is a basically a loan amount of $47,189 on for Artie Seymour. And we're also motioning that we were going to move this 11 point, um, this 11,797 into the, um, into the debt service account. And the, and the town would be affirming this transfer. So I guess maybe the Board of Finance reference in here is a little redundant because that's what we are doing, um, is recommending for town action that we move um, 11000 into the to debt service account. I just we didn't have any um, other feedback issues or um, anything the last time we handled this through the through the uh, through the attorney's recommendation as to how we handled the motion at the town. I think it was pretty well vetted okay. at that point. We had a pretty extended conversation, and I remember. Uh, you're right. I mean, it was especially the first one that Jim had brought forth. Uh, they had worked out most of those details and, you know, I'm certainly not a contract lawyer, but I think that it was sufficient to satisfy all the parties. So I'm not, I'm not concerned. I mean, it's pretty obvious the intent. Yeah. I could pull the uh, town meeting minutes um, and to see how 
exactly they they um transcribe this this motion or this request into into the town meeting action um, have dates i've been asked do you happen to have the data either the board of finance or town meeting? I've been trying to actually do this. That. This um, this motion was this board of finance action. I think was April seventeenth, eighteenth, something like that. Of uh, um, twenty seventeen. Yeah, let me see if I have. Um... Oh yeah, April eighteenth of twenty seventeen in the board of finance. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, any of us could pull that up and follow along. Well, well, that's that's exactly what you're looking at on the screen. Um, but the town, what I was referring to Jeff as the, as the town meeting, you know, how did that read? So we'd have to look at the actual town okay. meeting minutes that followed this recommendation to see how they action. But but then again, I mean, that's that's something for the um, I guess uh, me to work with the first elect woman on is to make sure that we had. The language ready for the for the town meeting but this was appropriate and vetted for um the board of finance action okay all right i guess i'm not seeing anything shared maybe that's what i don't know if others are see what i don't see anything on the screen oh i'm sorry did i not meeting? Meeting. yep so oh, there up? we go what's up on the screen now i see a word document okay You see, whereas, yep. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it hadn't popped up yet. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so this was the actual motion, you know, adjusted from, uh, from 2017 that led to the town meeting action. What I was saying is the actual town meeting, uh, language could be pulled, but that's subsequent to this. And, and again, this was provided, um, and vetted through through legal counsel back when we did the original project for all grove so basically you're you know you're recommending for town action a project uh where the cost the total cost is you know fifty nine thousand. we're going to get a twelve thousand subsidy net cost of 47 over four years with zero interest and then um you need approval to move the first year of debt service um out of the unallocated fund into the debt service account this is one fourth of the 47 net cost i broke up the okay. the two projects into already uh, seymour and the high school so that you know they were they were discrete um contracts yeah. that i figured okay keep them discrete Any more questions? And I just have this drafted up so that I can capture the minutes, but somebody's gonna make a motion um, and, and possibly second this to recommend for town meeting action. Well, I'll make the motion to get it on the table uh, for the, the uh, RDC model one. So we have a motion for um, RDC more, uh, the, uh, I'll, I'll read it just for the record. Um, we have a motion from Jeff Clark uh, to recommend for town meeting action. Uh, whereas East Granby Board of Education, the town of East Granby is interested in replacing present lighting at RDC more elementary school with energy efficient LED lighting it was the project. And whereas the Board of Education on behalf of the town is about to enter into an agreement with Eversource and Earthlight Innovations, Innovative Solar Solutions for the replacement of such lighting, which said agreement provides for financial incentives to the Board of Education in the town of East Granby. And whereas the total cost of the project is a sum not to exceed $59,849.02, and Eversource Energy has agreed to provide incentives not to exceed $12,660, and has agreed to finance the balance not to exceed $47,189.02 over four years with zero interest, otherwise known as the loan. And whereas the loan is described herein in a transfer of a sum not to exceed $11,797.25, 
from the unallocated fund balance to the debt service account in fiscal year 23 for the LED project will require approval of the Board of Finance and of the town meeting. I'll Do second I... that. This is Mike. All right. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Uh, Just because further... I didn't have to read it. <laughs> yeah. Any further discussion? Mark, I'll just note that I found the minutes for the town meeting from 2017. Yeah. And, and the way it begins is um, resolution, be it hereby resolved that the town approve all Grove School LED lighting project, period. And then it goes into the whereas and it defines what the project was. Okay. So it kind of did it. It just adopted you know, this language. Up. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you for looking that up. I know it was um, well vetted and choreographed uh, for proper uh, recording. So, um, any other comments, questions? That was for Elgrove, not Seymour. Any other comments? Uh, the only thing I, I just like to make one quick comment and and I know the, the projects like this are quite cumbersome and large but I think with an expenditure and I, I plan on voting in favor of it but I get always get a little nervous when there's one vendor that's been contacted for a project of this size I brought this up before with some other things and I'm not sure what the uh, logistical or ability to get other quotes on this particular project are but I think going forward it would be really from my perspective, critical that we at least get two quotes on projects of this size, because I know there can be quite a variant, regardless of the incentive that we're getting, percentage of that incentive changes based on the cost of the project. So anyway, that's my two cents. Ray, when you referenced the um, uh, Earthlight is a state approved contractor. I mean, is that, is that, do you mean they're on the state bid list? So then they, uh, they are on vetted? the approved state. They are, they've already been vetted by the state. They are on the approved state bid list. Okay. That That's why there's no need to go for a third, for, for two, three, or four bids. They're already locked into certain vendors, certain processes. Um, I mean, if you want, we could do that down the road. Um, well, I think Mike's point, we're not doing another one of these per se. I hope, I hope not, not for another 20 years anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, just so, not to, you know, uh, just because they're on the bid list, I get that. And I, uh, it's a, it's a very well vetted list and all that. It doesn't mean that the different vendors on the list aren't going to give you different numbers. Mm -hmm. It means that they're following the formula that the state's put forth and their trusted vendors, et cetera. I'm not questioning any of that. I'm just <laughs> saying. Uh, the, the bid process usually involves more than one quote and, and having done some projects myself, I can tell you, and having been on the building committee for a couple of years and you had, as have you, right? There's quit variant sometimes, you know, look at the, the, the pro different projects, but I'll leave it at that. Just, I think a project of any scope over a certain dollar amount, if the vendor isn't specific to that process, in other words, if it's not the person who did it previously, you should always at least get one other quote, at least, perhaps preferably three. But anyway, okay. Fair point, Mike. Any other uh, questions, comments for the motion? I can't see everybody um, on the screen here. All right, now I've got everybody. Um, last call, where I call the question. Okay, hearing none. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any, um, any opposed? Is that an uh, opposition, Natalie? Yeah. Okay. okay. Opposed. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I'll capture the, the votes. I think that was um, 
five five votes yes uh one one, one opposed that's natalie okay the the second project motion uh is for the middle high school so i'll entertain um a motion to recommend for town meeting action the following uh, whereas the East Granby Board of Education, Town of East Granby, is interested in replacing the lighting at the East Granby Middle High School um, with energy efficient LED lighting project. And whereas the Board of Education, on behalf of the town, is about to enter an agreement with Eversource and Earthlight Innovative Solar Solutions for the replacement of such lighting, which said agreement provides for financial incentives to the Board of Education, Town of East Granby, and whereas the total cost of the project is a sum not to exceed. $476,084.53 and Eversource Energy has agreed to provide incentives not to exceed $155,008.80 and has agreed to finance the balance not to exceed $321,075.73 over four years with 0% interest uh, known as the loan. And whereas the loan is described herein in a transfer of a sum not to exceed $80,268.93 from the unallocated fund balance to the debt service account in fiscal year 23 for the LED project will require approval of the Board of Finance and the town meeting. So moved. Thank you, Jim. Second. Okay, any uh, discussion? We've exhausted this discussion on the topic of the last one, okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, opposed? Opposed. Okay, Natalie, I've opposed. Uh, the motion passes. Okay. That brings us to that concludes item four of business. Uh, we now have public comment. I have public comment. Didn't we uh, forget the capital? Yeah. The what? Capital request from last meeting. Right. I had the LED projects as the um, as the item on here. Because M Missy went through the uh, capital request last time. Uh, okay. But Is no action was no action was taken on. Okay. Is everybody prepared to go through the capital request? From the last meeting from the information provided you want to hit the um, the overview on that Ray well I can do it okay, okay so this is the document that was uh, shared last time and I did a quick overview um, at the last meeting. So essentially this is, or these are the requests from the capital expenditure for the uh, fiscal year 22 five-year plan. This request for the East Caribbean Public Schools includes facilities, priorities, and upgrades, equipment, and technology. The request is part of the Board of Education's five-year capital plan for 21-22 with one item from the 22-23 year. The needs have been discussed and prioritized with the Board of Education Facilities Subcommittee members and with the support of Ray Carlson, who is our Facilities Supervisor. So this all went to our Board of Education meeting on Monday, April 25th, um, and was voted on and approved to move this to the Board of Finance. The first item is multi-school camera upgrades. Freeway Communications is the uh, vendor. It is our current provider for surveillance and video recording equipment at all of our school locations. Last year, the vendor conducted a walkthrough of all school premises with administration to determine a multi-phase implementation system. We are currently in phase two. 
This current uh, camera upgrade will enhance coverage of certain blind spots, plus begin to phase out outdated analog cameras model. We will also install priority intercom systems for frequently used entry. Freeway Communications has served our district very well as a local provider and has our school district listed as the priority customer for technical support needs. So the cost on that um, is not to exceed $10,000. Mark, do you want me to read through all of them at once? You know, I have the, um, I have the document um, up and I think we, we could take them one by one. So does everybody have the, um, the document that was provided a few weeks back relative to the, so the first one's multi-school, well, the first one's camera upgrades that, uh, that Missy just covered. So, um, to get these started and to get through them, let me, um, let me just offer the motions on these. We'll see if there's a, uh, a motion uh, in, in a second, and then we can have a discussion on them. So the first one was for uh, the camera upgrades that, that Missy uh, just, just went through and, and part of an overview last time. So um, the motion would be a recommend for town meeting action, um, a project for camera upgrades, with a sum not to exceed $10,000 with any unused funds to be returned to the capital non-recurring fund. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, let me get my notes in order here for minutes. That was um, Jeff and Natalie as a second. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And Mark, could you tell me the date that you forwarded the, these documents from Missy? Or I'm, I'm looking for the email. Um, May 10th. And the email would have been titled LED lighting project and capital request from the Board of Ed, BOE. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the camera upgrades. Any discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion. Uh, this was on the capital project. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Abstentions? All right. Motion unanimous. Um, next project is with the East, East Granby High School tennis court maintenance. Um, this is a um, quote from Hiding Tennis Right Way Crack Repair uh, to complete um, and warranty all the uh, surface of the courts. So uh, the uh, capital plan reflected a $10,000 uh, commitment originally. I think the uh, the quote came in at fourteen thousand twenty eight dollars. So if I'd entertain a motion for a uh, tennis court maintenance project for a sum not to exceed fourteen thousand twenty eight dollars with any unused funds to re be returned to the capital non recurring fund. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
No opposed. Jim, you're in favor? Yes, I'm in favor. Uh, Mark, uh, did we hear a second on that? Yeah, I did. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, that was uh, Natalie and Jeff, right? Yeah. Reverse order. Yes. Okay. Um, Next project uh, dealt with also with um, addressing some tennis court issues. Remove trees around the tennis courts. Um, this was planned at 11,000. The quote is actually uh, just under 7,000. So I think between the high school um, tennis court issue, we're, we're within within budget. So I'd recommend I'd um, entertain a motion to recommend for town meeting action uh, project to remove trees around the tennis courts. For some not to exceed six thousand nine hundred seventy-five dollars, uh, with any unused funds returned to the capital non-recurring fund. So moved. Okay. So I'll second from Jeff, uh, second from Natalie. Thank you. I just had a, since we're on the second, I just had a quick, I'm, I'm looking at these quotes. I looked at them, but the, um, just, to, just to clarify, these were single source quotes once, or are you just providing us with the ones that you decided to go with? So my understanding, Mike, and my experience here is when it was a state approved vendor, we gave the one quote. So we do have two quotes for uh, some of the equipment that's coming up. The camera is a single quote simply because three way already services our um, schools. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And I had a question specific to the trees around the tennis court. Um, was this to prevent the tree debris from falling on the cord, or is this about roots and things like that um, causing upheaval in the courts? Both. Go ahead, Bob. Both, Natalie. Uh, the roots have been, as those trees have matured, have caused problems for years with the courts cracking. And certainly uh, the large oak trees, when they fall in the fall, uh, and start decomposing, even though the custodians are out there cleaning them. You know, oak is off a lot of tannic acid, which causes damage to the surface. So the idea was to take those down and mulch that area with stone. And I don't know if anyone's taken trees down recently, like I have. $6,900 for all that work and stone work looks like a pretty good deal, because some of those oak trees are good size, and they're going to take some work to take it away. But damage from both, to answer your question. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree with you on the quote. I just, I, I haven't been there in a long time, but I, it was beautiful. The shade they offered and all the good things trees do for us. But um, that they certainly offered shade. You're right. Yeah, you're the, right. Um, and if it's a root problem, I guess that's just going to be as the the roots decay, we'll have to deal with that down the road, right? As the as we, yeah. we see on the bike path, right? Yes, when they renovated the high school and redid the tennis courts, you know, the roots were there, but the trees probably weren't as mature. And they just uh, went over it and it worked. It worked for, you know, now it's been what, 21, 22 years. Uh, unfortunately, they're taking a lot of maintenance now. A couple of years ago, if we didn't go on lapsing fund, they told us they'd be needing replacement in a couple of years or getting to be a safety concern. So uh, these type of things are just uh, hopefully uh, give them more life. Uh, you're right, it's going to take away the shade. There's no question about that. But I think the leaves and debris that fall down there constantly has been a problem that's worth resolving. Thank you. Thank you. So we have the tennis court tree removal motion uh, made by Jeff, second by Natalie. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 
Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. Okay. Uh, the next project request um, that I'd entertain a motion for recommending for town meeting action is to refinish the main gym floor uh, for a sum not to exceed $7,000. $241.85 uh, with any unused portions uh, returned to the capital non recurring fund. So moved. Second. Um, and yeah, just to note, the uh, a capital plan estimate uh, had was 15000 nearly double that. So, um, any other? Uh, questions, comments? Jeff? Yes. Um, I noticed the original capital or the most recent capital plan referenced the uh, stage as well as the, what are we on, the gym floor? And I see the price about half is the stage doesn't need to be worked, I assume, but just was wondering. Uh, that's a good question, uh, Jeff. Correct. We We decided the stage does not need to be done this year. Thank you. Okay. Any other? Last year, I believe, and you know, with the last couple of years, it just hasn't had the use as it typically does. Okay. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Uh, next capital request is for custodial cleaning equipment at the East Granby High School Middle School. Um, it's purchasing um, burnisher, scrubber, white area vacuum. There were two quotes uh, for this. Uh, one was at thirty-two thousand six. The other was at twenty-nine seven. So this was a multiple bid. Um, so I'd entertain a motion for. Uh, project to purchase custodial cleaning equipment uh, for a sum not to exceed $29,764 uh, from the capital not recurring fund with any unused portion to be returned to the capital not recurring fund. So moved. This is Mike. Thank you. And second from Natalie. Any, any questions, discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Next project was to reconfigure the computer room at the Seymour School. Um, the existing room needs to be reconfigured for a classroom service delivery, and the work will be completed internally at the direction of the town and school maintenance facilitator, uh, Ray Carlson. Um, the overall cost is, is not expected to see, exceed $15,000. So I imagine that's for supplies and external cost, or or Ray's going to oversee the, uh, yeah, it's, it's in-house staff that's going to do the reconfiguration, Missy? Yeah, Ray did an assessment, and um, if there's anyone externally um, in terms of electrical, but he did all that work, again, looking for what had to be done, so... It's, it's our computer lab, whether it's going to be a classroom service area, office space, we are looking kind of keenly at all, all of our spacing. But yeah, Ray uh, Carlson will be overseeing it as much as internal work um, as possible, if not all. Okay. So I'd entertain a motion uh, to recommend for town meeting action, uh, sum of $15,000, not to exceed $15,000 to reconfigure the computer room at Seymour School. Uh, with any unused funds to be returned to the town uh, in capital non recurring fund. So moved. I'll take that as a Jeff motion and an Adelie second. And, and I do have a question. I'm just curious this item and the sidewalks below, were they not in the original capital plan? Uh, you're on mute, Missy. 
Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, yes, the computer room was, the sidewalk is in the plan, but for 22-23. Okay, that's right, okay. okay. So the computer room is a new item, even though you've been talking about it. It just didn't get it on the plan last year? No, it is on the plan. Oh, it is? Okay. Yes, it is. All right. I'm, I'm just looking at the memo, and it didn't have the, so, at that same amount, the 15000 Okay. Sorry, now it doesn't have what? It just didn't have the plan that it was originally part of the capital, so it was originally part of the capital plan at, at the 15000 figure? Oh, you know why? That's why, Natalie, because the cost that we have the estimate now is the same as it was uh, on the approved plan. That's correct. Oh, Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Jim, good. Uh, any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. That was unanimous. All right. Uh, next project is, uh, looks like replacing a, a Dell server uh, unit that was put into service looks like seven years ago, uh, VMware. Um, and this is through Dell listed as a pre-qualified vendor, but, um, and then the uh, quote was attached. So I'd entertain a motion uh, for a sum of uh, not to exceed $5,493.67 uh, to purchase and install a Dell server uh, at the RD Seymour School with any unused funds to be returned to the capital non-recurring fund. So moved. So moved. So we've got a Jeff motion and a Natalie second. Uh, any questions? Discussion? Jim? Yes, uh, one small one. Uh, the old server, is there any benefit for selling it used to uh, a surplus place and we, we can get some money back from the from the old one? I know, Jim, our IT department, they do have some type of a buyback that they work with. Um, I, I can't remember exactly which company, but with all of our end-of-life Chromebooks and anything else that we use um, to get the exact answer, I would need to ask IT, but I know they're they do have things that they do because um, I know we've received credit in the past. Thanks. Jeff? Uh, I get more curiosity, but are, are you aware of any programs that um, make cloud computing affordable such that a actual device would be un, would not be needed? I do not, Jeff. I can certainly ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we do use utilize the cloud quite a bit, and it still we still need some servers to run the data from the cloud through our our programs here. Um, but we are we like with our the Munis process. We utilize their servers. We sit on their servers. That way, we don't pay we're paying for a service that's that's how we got the price reductions yeah. with tyler so as we are utilizing it where we can jeff to be honest with you okay thank you yep. okay any other discussion all those in favor aye okay any opposed no abstentions natalie oh i said i did you hear me Oh, your video is on a delay. I'm good. Yep, I got you. Okay. The last project is for sidewalk repairs. Um, this is at the East Granby High School and Seymour School. Um, so I'd entertain a motion for a, a sum not to exceed... For, uh, entertain a motion to recommend for town meeting action a sum not to exceed thirty thousand dollars for sidewalk repairs at east granby high school and seymour school 
um, with any unused funds to be returned to the capital non-recurring fund. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion carries. I think that wraps up the capital requests. Um, Mark, I couldn't unmute that. I just had a real quick question regarding the sidewalks. I know it's been approved, but the uh, is that a vendor or is that – I'm not seeing a – maybe I'm missing something. Is that a quote we got for sidewalk repairs or is that Ray, – Ray will be doing it internally, Mike. Okay, so that's a, a, a projected cost? Correct. Like a mostly, budget. Mostly, okay. ma mostly material, Mike. All right. Perfect. Thank you. And, and what just before we roll off a of capital, just, I just I wanted to get this out there. There's been a, a substantial amount of money uh, proposed for uh, environmental improvements at the schools. And I know we just did a bunch of work at Seymour or uh, Algrove. And I don't I know that there were certain things that we weren't able to uh, do anything about, such as uh, air control at, at a level that would be. Uh, ideal, I guess that's the way to put it. Is there, have you guys looked at that at all? Or are you aware of that? Or does that apply to school districts of our size? Or? We are currently looking at it right now, Mike. I know they, they signed into uh, law some new program. Or not law. They created a new grant that is out yes, yes. there. And um, I could share with you the 673 pages of data that I've been reading <laughs> through. <Okay>. But, <laughs> but I found the you important have the cliff page. I'm not sure we're going to qualify because it starts with districts that um, the per capita income is at the bottom of the 169 ranking, and it's okay. and it's tiered that way. Um, I still have a lot of reading to do, but uh, long story short, I think if if we do try to apply, we we're, we're probably there's a good chance we're going to end up on the short end. But you never know. We've gotten some other grants recently, so it's worth a shot. Thank you. Very good. Um, let me thank all the Mark? members. For, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to know whether there was um, a time that the Board of Ed was looking to take this to town meeting by or whether it can wait until the end of June meeting. I, I would say the sooner the better on the LED project only because if the town approves it the voters then we can then we can place the order for all the components there's a lot of components that need purchased and um yeah natalie when you said the june meeting what what were you referring to i just the traditional end of june meeting where we do any transfers for the operating budget oh i would imagine Did yeah I, i've got to talk to the um first select woman about getting this on the calendar but now that it's been approved tonight i mean there's no reason to, have to um get it on the calendar as expeditiously as we can i think it would be before our next board of finance meeting sounds great thank you yeah no thanks for bringing that up um i guess yeah. along those lines do we know if the uh um i don't know if, if Eden's on but will there be capital requests from the town yeah, um, Eden is on and she can speak to that. Um, we did um, correspond that um, she had nothing to bring um, to discuss tonight for capital requests, so we might hear um, some I will of the on the 14th, the next meeting. So we're looking at, we were planning a town meeting the week of the 21st, but we'll, you'd like it before the 14th. So we'll have two town meetings. I guess right. where we're going is to have two town meetings. Is right. That so the week of June 6th for Board of Ed town meeting? Yeah, I think you're probably given the, I'm missing Ray and Bob can, but I mean, I think given the, the school break and the time to get the work done, um, 
because we're, we're going to be another three weeks out, but uh, I'll leave it to, to Missy and Bob. Hey, Mark. Oh. Yes. You go ahead, Bob. Okay, now I'm there if I could just talk. Yeah, it's just getting uh, – it's getting late and just concerned that we get all the materials in and have everything done over the summer it makes it so much easier uh, for the crew than to, you know, be doing work later. So this certainly the sooner, the better with this, these things would help. And I just like to thank the board of finance for certainly supporting, you know, these are important requests as we all work together in a five year plan. You know, originally we had uh, over $241,000 was part of our original request. Uh, tonight we're coming in at a little bit over 118,000. So, you know, we've come in 123,000 less, and you know we're trying. And I you know, give credit to Missy and 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 Ray what they're doing, and certainly Ray Carlson on their end. But uh, certainly commending you guys tonight uh, for supporting us. With that, to say thank you, and good night. Okay, thanks, Bob. Okay, so uh, we'll follow up with. Um even relative to um, scheduling the, the town meeting. Okay, that brings us to public comment. Uh, Paul? Yes, hey. So um, this LED project that I just heard discussion of sounds like a disaster since it doesn't include any of the labor to install any of the stuff. So I don't know how you could possibly be making a vote on this LED project without knowing the labor costs that are associated with it and taking this, it's almost a half a million dollars of a loan that I see here. So it should be an interesting town meeting, and I would hope that you would have the labor costs to present to uh, the folks when they come to that meeting. Yeah, uh, so Paul, if, could, if you, I usually don't get the back and forth, but if you want me to clarify that, um, you have it. No, you, you don't need to clarify it for me, Mark. I'm just saying that I already heard that it, the labor costs were included and what you guys just approved? Yeah, I'll, I'll, Paul. All is I'm that saying a true is, statement is, or an untrue statement? That is an that is an untrue statement. I think you've you've heard, misheard uh, what was represented. The the quote for the project and the entire project cost includes um, all of the uh, equipment and fixtures and all the labor to install it. Um, there's a there's savings component. In other words, it's going to be cheaper. Um, electricity cost and there's also a savings relative to the old maintenance and repairs cost and when we asked about the assumption in the savings related to the maintenance and repairs cost those are hard dollars for uh, the equipment and, and supplies related to the repairs but it excludes the labor related to those repairs so um, the savings are um, potentially understated um, if it was outside labor. I think it, the labor was excluded from that savings because it's viewed as internal labor and there's really not a cost takeout um, relative to that. So it was a conservative and appropriate case to put um, approach to put together the business case. But okay, so maybe, maybe I understood that part of it, but we're yeah. looking forward to the seeing the savings and the deductions from the BOE budget. So. Uh, as far as my, uh, after the town budgets were voted on at your special meeting, um, you guys voted and they discuss, you discussed what the mill rate increase to the town should be, and I put in a freedom of information request for the Excel spreadsheet that you all, you all have shared and are all are using to calculate uh, the mill rate. Uh, it contains various scenarios about revenue, expenditure estimates, uh, includes what we're going to expect in grant funds, what uh, we can expect from uh, tax revenues, grant and aid funds, and, and everything else. So I, I'm curious as to why you as a board feel that you, you that's something that you don't want to share with, with residents as to how you develop the basis for this mill rate uh, increase and are not willing to publish something that shows very clearly uh, to town residents exactly how you guys arrived at <coughs> this 0.5 uh, mill rate increase. So I'm still waiting for that document and I know on June 14th you're gonna you're gonna ratify it and I, I'm again making a request to you guys to to supply uh, to the residents what exactly is 
the basis for this mill rate increase and, and what it's based on. Um, that you, you told me in my, your email response that all that information was already discussed and published. Well, I have not seen any of that. Um, heck, I haven't even seen a, a detail of this capital plan that you're talking about, the capital expenditure plan that seems to get modified every time you meet. I can't find a copy of that online anywhere to review as to what our planned capital expenditures are. I just went on to the town website just now to look for a copy, and I can't find it. So, so you have set $600,000 as contribution to this capital fund, and yet you don't have a, a project plan even for the next year, I mean, I know there's a five-year estimate, and I understand five-year estimates change, but if you guys don't have the projects decided for next year that are going to come out of the capital account, that's a planning problem for the Board of, of Finance, okay, that you can't show us which capital projects are on schedule for next fiscal year and, and how we're going to pay for them out of the current year's uh, budget. So I have no detailed expenditure plan, and I just learned that you know there's going to be a $300,000 plus expenditure required next year for HVAC systems at the high and middle schools. Well, that hasn't been discussed tonight at all, and I want to know how that's going to get paid for because we're doing $40,000 in repairs to that as a temporary fix, and yet I, I have no plan or discussion of how we're going to pay for that $300,000 uh, upgrade or replacement system for next year. So th that's very concerning to me that you guys have not been, you know, up front with what's going on with the capital plan and, and how we're going to fund it. And we have $3.1 million coming to us from the feds and the state and ARPA and ESSER funds that can apply to capital projects. Uh, I did not hear from Ray Engel tonight about what he's doing for these projects at the schools, but I guarantee you that most of those qualify for those funds and could be, you know, applied for now and reduce costs for residents if we use those and apply them now because we have a limited time frame to do these, to get them in place. I mean, I didn't hear from uh, Eden, but we're planning on replacing the library HVAC system using ARPA funds. Okay, so that's a good use. That's going to save residents and taxpayers money. So uh, I guess my complaint is you guys aren't being very transparent. I've, I've asked for a plan for how you're going to use your grant funds. I have not seen anything. I've asked Eden. I've asked Bob Paskowitz as to what exactly is your plan to use the rest of those funds. And I, I think we need you guys need to forward an intra-board advisory council and create a prioritized list of how we could utilize those funds to avoid you know having to take out loans because we're taking out loans I mean that's what this LED project is it's a loan from Eversource a single source vendor that we didn't go out to bid for who knows if somebody could do this project cheaper than Eversource I don't trust Eversource I can tell you that much because my bill is going up 40 percent this year from Eversource all right, so I don't trust them, period. And so I would hope that you guys will come forward on a June 14th meeting and put out a clear plan and a clear message for folks as to what's going on with debt service, what's going on with the capital plan, why we're having this 0.5 mil rate increase, and what we're spending it on for capital and debt service. Because you say it's all out there, Mark. I can't find it. I want it. Please provide it. Because I will go and I will appeal once again to the state that you guys aren't providing me with the basis for your decisions. They, you guys are circulating these documents. I saw you pull up one tonight. Okay? So please, I'm not trying to be difficult. I just want the information. I want to be able to review it so I can form an opinion and residents can form an opinion when they come to these town meetings to vote on this stuff because it's all smoke and mirrors, okay? I want to see the data, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other public comment? Okay. 
I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mike. Jeff. So uh, motion in a second to adjourn. Uh, thanks all for uh, quite a long evening, uh, very productive uh, uh, meeting. So um, have a good night.